Hello, and welcome to FEA Modeling with SimCenter and NX NASTRAN. My name is Nathan Anderson. I'm with Predictive Engineering, and this is going to be a quick introduction to SimCenter, NX NASTRAN. We're going to open up a part, uh, apply a mesh, uh, create some boundary conditions, and analyze the model. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to open a part. And what we want to do is go to the workshop folder, workshop one, landing gear, and I'm going to switch to part files, and I'm going to double click on the landing gear PRT file. So what we have here is our part that we want to mesh, and you can see that uh, we've started in the part navigator. Um, if we go over to application, we can see that the assembly application is started. SimSetter tries to be smart about uh, what it thinks you're wanting to do. So since we opened a PRT file, a part shop file, uh, it went straight into assembling. Now for um, FEA modeling, we're going to use pre and post application. So I'm going to go ahead and select the pre post application. And that, that stands for pre processing and post processing. So the solver, NX NASTRAN, uh, in order to use it, we need to do some pre-processing, uh, create the FEM and simulation files, and apply our boundary conditions. So here in the simulation navigator, what I can do is I can right-click on the landing gear part and select new FEM and simulation. I'm going to go ahead and just click OK and accept the defaults in the new FEM and simulation dialog box. And I'm going to do the same here uh, for the solution dialog box. And we can see now that the simulation navigator uh, is active and we've got a slew of containers in here. Uh, we can also see, and I'll show you, that SimCenter has created three new files. And we can drill down here. We've got our sim file, our simulation file. We have our landing gear uh, fem file. We have our fem1 underscore i part file. This is our idealized part. And we have our master part file, our landing gear part. And uh, what the other thing you can see here is we're using in context uh, editing. So the active display. Displayed part is the simulation file, and you can see that by it says displayed here under status. But the work part is the FEM file. And the FEM file, a uh, finite element model file, is where we're going to create our mesh. So what we can do is we can go straight to meshing, and we can select 3D tetrahedral mesh. We can then, uh, with the 3D tetrahedral mesh dialog box open here, we can select the body we would like to mesh. And under element size, we're just going to click the automatic element size button, this little lightning bolt button. And we want to make sure we've got linear on the mid node method. And the model cleanup options, we also want to turn that all the way down to zero. Uh, what that does is it creates um, kind of some automatic model cleanup. Uh, I like to have control over that, so I like to just turn that off. And uh, if I want to do any model cleanup, I'll do it manually. So go ahead and click OK, and the 3D mesher will go ahead and create a mesh of our part. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to assign a material to this part. So up here in the Properties section, uh, there's a More button. And when you hit click more, you can see the assign materials command. So I'm going to click that. And it's going to ask me for a body to assign the material to. I'm going to select the, our part body. And I'm going to just pick um, 4340 steel here. And you can see this little checkbox. And that's done because uh, for this particular part, in the landing gear model, uh, the material was already assigned. So uh, we didn't actually have to do that, that in this model, but I wanted to show it because uh, it's an important step, and we always need to make sure that we have a material assigned. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. It assigns the material, and now we've got uh, our mesh and our material assigned. We can switch over to the simulation file. 
I can do that by right clicking here and say make work part and you'll see that the icon was grayed out and now it's colorful also here in the simulation file view you can see uh, that the highlighted part is the part that's the work part and the display part and in the simulation file this is where we're going to create our boundary conditions so we can go ahead and create a new force load we're going to do that on this bottom surface here and we're going to create a load of a thousand pounds in the positive Z direction. Go ahead and click OK. And you can see the load is displayed. There's a graphic here, a little red arrows uh, being displayed on that surface. So now with the load applied, now we can create our constraints. I'm going to go up to the constraint type button, drop down and select cylindrical constraint. And I'm going to apply a cylindrical constraint to these bearing surfaces of the upper part of the landing gear link. And I'm going to select those four surfaces. And these are bearing, bearing surfaces. So what we can do is we can say, okay, radial growth is fixed. Axial rotation bearings are free to rotate. So we're going to unselect fixed and select free there. And axial growth, we're going to say this is free as well. So it's free to slide up and down. Uh, the axis of the cylinders there. Go ahead and click OK and we can see a new graphic in the window. It's our uh, bearing constraint here, our cylindrical constraint. And you'll also notice that there are two new uh, coordinate systems created at the center of the cylinder of those, the face cylinder there. And we've got a cylindrical coordinate system for this one and a cylindrical coordinate system for that one. Now the next thing we need to do is, uh, since this isn't fully constrained, we're going to go ahead and fix the top here. So I'm going to again go to constraint type drop down. I'm going to do a fixed constraint. I'm going to apply it to the surface here, hit OK, and we can see a new, uh, new graphic in the window there. And as you get familiar with uh, SimCenter and start using it more, you'll get more and more familiar with uh, what these different graphics mean and represent. Okay, now we're ready to solve. We've got our material assigned, we've got our mesh, we've got our boundary conditions. Let's go ahead and run the analysis. So in the solution section here, I'm gonna go ahead and click the solve button. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say okay for the solve options. And what you'll see is a solution monitor as well as an information window. And these just give you some feedback as to what's going on with the solver. You also get this review results question. If you hit yes, it'll leave up the solution monitor so you can uh, look through and see what's happened. Or you can just click no and it'll uh, close that solution monitor. Let's go ahead and close the information w window and also the analysis job monitor. Now that the solution is run, let's go ahead and take a look at results. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and minimize the simulation file view. And you can see in the simulation navigator that under our solution one, we have a results folder. I'm going to expand that. And you can see there's some structural results here. Just double click there and it'll load the post processing navigator. Our solution one structural results, let's expand that and let's take a look at our stress under element nodal and let's take a look at our von Mises stress. So now we can see that our uh, landing gear uh, has the stress contoured over the part. Uh, we've got a maximum stress of about uh, 2700 PSI and we also see that we've got our uh, display is deformed. Our view is deformed here a little bit. And what we can do is we can, um, if we're curious where that maximum stress, with the location of that maximum stress, we can look in our viewports um, and expand the post view one. And there's an annotations folder here. We can expand that and check the box under maximum and we'll get a highlight of where our maximum stress is. And the other thing we can do is if we wanted to look at the deformation a little bit, we can edit our post view. 
And you can see here under the display options, we have a deformation location here. And I'm going to go ahead and click results. And right now we're displaying 10% of the model. So what that's doing is it's showing the deformation, scaling it by 10% of the volume of the part. And what I like to do is just first take a look at uh, one to one, absolute one to one, no scale, well, one to one scale. And you can see here, you can't really tell what's going on with the one to one. So let's, you know, multiply that by 10. So we're scaling our deflection by 10. Okay, there's a little bit of movement there, probably too small to really see. Let's go to 100. Okay, now we're getting a little bit more. And let's go up to 1,000. Okay, that's a little much. So maybe drop that back down to five, 500. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. See, we've got a 1,000 there. And if we wanted to know what that displacement, what the magnitude of that displacement is, we can just go up here to our, um, our solution structural here and just double click on our magnitude and it'll contour the, instead of the stress, it'll contour the displacement. So we can see that our maximum displacement, displacement is about four thousandths of an inch, and it occurs at the very end of the landing gear link. Okay, well that wraps up this first workshop. Uh, you now know how to um, start uh, an analysis, uh, start the pre and post processor. Uh, you know how to mesh apart. You know how to apply boundary conditions via a load and some constraints and how to solve a model. Thank you for watching.